How's everybody doing? My name is Mark, also known as DJNSM. Go to DJNSM.com to find out more or get in touch. Today I'm taking a few minutes out to show you how to build a frequency scanner in Ableton using the EQ8 native effect. This is a really important piece of information because it shows you how to shape your sound, how to work with uh, macros and some of the inner workings of Ableton, and it is the first in a two-part series of sidechain awesomeness. So uh, this is a Twitter challenge thing where I'm looking to, to do some more challenging stuff via interacting on Twitter. So let's jump right in here and start with our two tracks required. The first track we're going to be working with is what we will call a source track. The second track is a listener track. Next up we will need to modify the IO settings and we will take the audio from the source and we will set this to pre effects. You can also go post, stay away from post FX, stay away from post mixer. I usually use pre. Now set your monitor to on. And this is a best practice thing you should always do. Set your audio to to sends only and then right click here and disable all sends. What that does is it prevents audio from leaking into your main mix and creates what we call a dead track. And a dead track is just where audio goes and, and, and basically goes to die. And then we tap into that via listener tracks in other areas. So for the sake of our demonstration, we're going to set this to master and then we're going to take the volume down on our source track so we will be listening through the listener track. Here, take a look. And all we have going on here is that via some you know, pretty straightforward, awesome routing, we have the source track going into the listener track then into the main mix. So next up, find yourself a generic EQ8 and drop that on your listener track group that, expose your macros, turn off all but the middle EQ, or I'm using uh, EQ channel 4, choose the bell EQ type which is this one right here. Now assign your frequency to macro 1 and your Q or resonance to macro number 2, turn gain all the way up and then for the build we're gonna start with Q turned all the way up. I'm just gonna sweep the frequency into the middle and I like to have scale at 200 percent that's a personal preference so we're kinda sorta technically done and what we have right now is a really crappy frequency scanner. I'm gonna let you hear it really quick. All we're really doing is peaking the frequency in a needle format and making it louder and all the rest of the stuff is still coming through so the idea is there but it's not complete in order to make this complete what we have to do is build a low high shelf so let's get into the low high shelf what we're going to do now is turn on EQ channel 1 and we're going to select the low cut I'm going to use this one and not the the X4 or uh, the steeper cut because this plain one crosses over with Ableton 8 a little bit better and we're going to set the Q to about 0.72. There we go. Next up we're going to turn on EQ channel 8. We will select the high cut and again I'm not going to use the 4X. I'm going to just use the generic one because it crosses over with Ableton Live 8 a little bit better. Okay. And on this one we want to set the Q to about 0.3. There we go. So now we are going to assign EQ channel 8 frequency to macro 1 and then we will assign EQ channel 1 frequency to macro 1 as well and this is where everything gets weird and that's okay we're gonna we're gonna tune this now so let's just take a quick listen you may not have heard that but it's working, it's just cutting too much of the sound out. So we have to tune it. In order to tune it, we will need to enable the macro mapping mode. And we're going to turn macro number one all the way down. We will select EQ channel eight. And then you can tap on the frequency here and that'll pull it up automatically in your mapping window up here. And what we're gonna do is adjust the macro mapping for minimum to about 70 Hertz. 
All right, and uh, that's about close enough. Now we're going to turn macro one down here all the way up, and we're going to select EQ channel one, and we're going to set the maximum at about. Make sure we get the right one here. Blink. There we go. Set the maximum to about 17 kilohertz. There we go. And let's take a look here. You can see now it's got a little bit different shape. But we're not quite done yet. You can see that the EQs are crossing over and we don't want that to happen and that's really 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 easy to fix because what we're going to do is we're going to get into EQ channel 4 here and we're going to adjust the minimum maximum so we want this one to be I don't know about 50 Hertz is a good place to be for minimum and then your maximum I would say about 18 kilohertz is a good place to be now you can see they don't cross over at all. Let's take a listen. You're done. That is it. The Q or resonance here allows you to make it a little bit fatter. You can make it sort of obscene if you want, but this allows you to capture a little more sound. So this might sound awful, but you'll get the idea. There you go, you are done. And again, best practice is to set this to your sends only so you don't leak that sound out. It's adding a lot of decibels to a specific frequency and get you in a lot of trouble. So now you have a basic scanning track and this is ready for some sidechain awesome. Hope you found this helpful. Again, my name is Mark, also known as DJNSM. Find out more about me at DJNSM.com and I will see you on the next video in this series where we dominate the sidechain. Thanks again.